on. It's not that bad. It's terrible. It's awful. It looks like a naked mole rat. BMW have completely lost the plot. It's hideous. Yeah, we've read all your comments, but at the end of the day, here is the new BMW M4. To be honest, BMW should probably be congratulating for generating so many lines of copy and so many social media comments just over the redesign of a grill. But BMW knows its customers. They know the people who buy M4s, at least they say they do. They say that those who are buying M4s, and that is double the amount of people than buy M3s, are extroverts. They want to be seen. They want something that people will look at. And I guess that's what they've got. Well, that nose, I mean, it's definitely there. But it's not the first time that BMW have made a car with a big upright grille. If you go right back to the days of the 328, that had a big one that, if anything, makes this one look minuscule. And I'm not saying it's as pretty as a 328. In fact, it's not a pretty car, but it doesn't look that bad. And people are definitely going to notice it as it drives past them through town. But then it's going to go past them and they're going to notice that it's got a really nice coupe body style. And then it's going to drive away from them and they're going to see that it's got a diffuser and it's got four big exhausts. And actually, my problem with the design is not at the front. It's that diffuser. It's because it's fake. And by fake, I don't mean it's not going to produce much downforce. I mean, it ends there. It really does nothing. And it's meant that to put four exhausts in, they've had to squeeze them in so they look like they're in a straight jacket. If BMW customers really want to make a statement, they certainly will with the M4. Never mind those big grills, it's the flared chin and splitter that are the most aggressive things here, really pushing that Angry Birds pig aesthetic. But the changes aren't just to the outside. Under the bonnet, it has a new version of BMW's inline six engine. It has two twin scroll turbochargers. It has an indirect intercooler and an electronic wastegate to help the turbos spin up faster. Just like its bigger brothers, M's five through eight, it also doesn't have a dual clutch gearbox. It's an old fashioned torque converter automatic. Now it might look like a big Larry kid, but BMW want this car to go up against the 911, not the RS5. So it's gotta be something pretty special, right? any performance car, especially one styled like this, is how it drives. And the stats are impressive. In fact, they're supercar impressive. 510 horsepower and 650 newton meters of torque. It'll hit 62 miles an hour in 3.9 seconds, a number that will only come down when the all-wheel drive X-Drive comes out. But there are some negative points. It's heavy. This car weighs 1,700 kilograms and it will cost you at least 76,000 pounds. This one is 87,000. The new M4 also boasts improved cooling with two separate systems cooling intercooler and engine block. There's a carbon fiber roof, carbon fiber wing mirrors and a teeny tiny carbon rear spoiler which I do actually quite like. There is, if you need, a pro pack which reduces weight even further and adds ceramic bricks. Oh, and yes, that interior is incredibly orange. Kyle Army orange, to be precise, complete with merino leather. It's a strong contrast to the Dravit grey, but probably not for everyone. The seats, comfortable but interesting to get into, are another £5,600. Now, BMW says this is a rival for a 911, but if you're coming here expecting lightweight sports car chuckability, you're in the wrong place. It is heavy. It's 180 kilograms heavier than the old M4. So this is a car you're not going to jump straight into and immediately extract lap time from. It's something you've got to get 
a little bit more used to. Let's start by listing some of its quirks. It is, as we've said, heavy. And when you jump in this thing, on drive one, two, probably even three, that's going to be the main thing you notice. Then there's the brakes, which are very good, and there are ceramic options available. But the pedal is a little bit mm, woolly. It's not really giving you a massive amount of information. And then there's the steering, which isn't bad. It's just, it feels like every single bit of information is being sent through a bunch of filters to get rid of any noise that might be coming through. But once you've done drives one, two, three, drive four, that's when this thing starts to get interesting. Key to this gradual realization is the customizability of drive that M cars are becoming so good for. Those two small buttons on the steering wheel are your magic buttons. Experiment with the settings, get everything right, and you'll turn the M4 into not just a good car for everyone, but a car set up totally to your liking. Well, one of the major and most important things about this car is the engine, which feels every single one of its 510 horsepower. But you do have to fiddle with the settings to make it feel right. In the more standard settings, it feels a little bit constrained. In fact, even in sport mode, it doesn't really feel like it's doing what it wants to do. You have to stick it in Sport Plus to really feel what this thing can do, and then it can really do it. The downside is the noise, which is fine, but it's generated partly by the speakers. So if you're really heavily accelerating and listening to some music or a podcast, it'll start vibrating the speakers in a most unpleasant manner. very little lag when it comes to sticking your foot down as long as you're not trying to accelerate in paint for some reason. And that's partly due to those electronically controlled wastegates which help to keep some of the pressure in if you need to call on it. That torque is available from 2,500 RPM to about 5,500, at which point peak power kicks in, which is available from there until the 7,200 RPM red line. And it really is just awesome. There are some supercars that don't feel like they have this kind of force to it. After a few drives, it really becomes a sort of friendly, fun bear. It's that mate of yours who does like a few drinks. Not really going to go quite too far, he's not going to get involved in a fight, but you never really know where the night's going to end. But one of the most impressive things about this car is the way that that, differ that electronic differential manages to work, manages to rein in all of that power without leaving you completely out of the game. It means that you stick your foot down in a low gear and it squirms a little bit, but it never feels like it's about to slew sideways and really spit you off the road like a Mustang can. There's a little bit more to it than say, I don't know, something like an R8 or a lower level 911, which can at times feel like, right, straight on, here we go. Turning at the front is okay when you approach a corner, it's fine. There will be a scrub of understeer if you sort of half arse it, if you don't properly approach it in the mid corner, you're sort of, sort of timid with your throttle work. But feather the throttle enough and you can absolutely balance this car almost any manner that you like. You really can feel just the little gentle adjustments that come with just a small change. And it's really a really pleasant experience. It's not scary in any way. It's not like the manner of getting to the middle of the corner and filling back and go, oh God, oh, cool. It's more that you are in harmony with what it can do. And if you are in the middle of a corner and you've perhaps undercooked the steering a little bit, you can fix that with your right foot not looking to produce plumes and plumes of smoke off the rear, just to rotate the car around you. It really is one of those cars that, yes, it's heavy, yes, it's big, yes, you feel like you're wrestling it to actually extract that kind of performance, but it starts to feel like it's shrunk around you to be a part of you, which is exactly, I think, 
what you want from these cars. I'm not sure the comparison with a 911 is fair. I think maybe people might think about buying one or the other, but not because they're looking for the same car. I think it would be a decision between two types of car. Given how heavy it is, given how slightly leery it can be, it's not a track car. It, there, I mean, there will probably be an M4 CS in the future and that will be lighter and it will probably be the car that you take out to break lap times. But this is not a lap time track car. It will be a lot of fun on a track if you've got some space and you can have a little bit of a play, especially with that almost endlessly configurable traction control because you will just turn it down to nothing and then poke the drifting bear inside you and just whack out some great big long lazy power slides. And you will be pushed on by the fact that this has a drift analyzer. So at the end of the day, you can, I don't know, come along and say, yes, mine was a four. I don't know what that means. The most interesting thing about the drift analyzer I've noticed is that it will measure your understeer. So if you ever want to go out and tell your mates exactly how far you plowed on, you can. I can't imagine why you wouldn't want to do that. The new M4 is never going to win over everyone. You just have to look at it to know, even if you, like me, look at it and go, hmm, actually, I don't really see what all the fuss is about. You can see why people immediately are going to be like, oh, it looks a bit, a bit nostrally. But give it a chance, drive it, and then get around a few more of its foibles. They are kidding themselves, I think, a little bit if they want to compare this to the 911. They should still be comparing it to the RS5. They should still be comparing it to a C63. It's not as big or brash or leery as a C63. But I tell you what, I think it could well be, if not just as good, possibly even better.